All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HPTV coming to you on it's Sunday evening. April, I mean, March the 17th. Now, this is an interesting story, or shall we call it news. And one of the subscribers in the community sent me a lot of information on this story. And it's about April 8th, 24. The solar eclipse now over here on this channel we don't do any fear mongering and we don't engage in conspiracy theories but there is something extra about april 8th of 2024 you know we got a lot going on in this country and there's a lot of things going on in this world so People use events for distractions, to push their narratives, and to push certain agendas. And they also could use these events for distractions or other things. You know, we all lived through Y2K and you know what I mean? We all went through a pandemic. Something that we never thought could happen in this country or we never seen coming. And factually, this country and the world has still not fully recuperated from the two years that we were on lockdown during the pandemic. Now think about that. We were confined to our homes with masks on our face for over two years, you know what I mean? A lot of people were unalived during that time. A lot of things transpired. Our children didn't go to school for two years. So if your child is a fifth grader, they have the educational skills of a third grader. But we, we accepted these things as the natural order because it was governmental sanctioned. But this April 8th thing seems a little bit different because of what the authorities are saying about it. Now, I'm going to show you a few clips and you can research these things yourself. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that are Christians that have a biblical perspective on it. But there's also a governmental perspective and a narrative that they're pushing. So I'm going to start with this first clip. Check it out. It's for fair usage under the 1976 Copyright Act for commentary educational purposes. Look at this and tell me what you think. in favor that passes unanimously a month away from the april 8th solar eclipse travis county issues a disaster declaration officials expect to see big crowds traffic and a strain on first i'm gonna interject just just once and i'm gonna let you finish this clip why did they issue a disaster declaration this ahead of an advance of april 8th which is strange to issue a disaster declaration that proceeds a galactic event. Check it out. Responders, hospitals, and roads. That's what we're trying to uh, put resources in place for to direct traffic, extra, extra law enforcement on the streets out in those areas, extra signage. Mm -hmm. uh, working with Waze and Google to try to pre pre identify and, and map routes that people can take safely into and out of the area. Private property owners in unincorporated areas are required to let the county know if they plan to host a gathering with more than 50 people. That's so first responders can prepare accordingly. We're making the declaration today. It's going to be in effect until the 8th because we're requiring that registration and those other measures until the 8th. 
Um, the court ratifying that today will keep it into effect. Del Valley ISD announcing Friday they're canceling classes on April 8th, joining these districts that will close that day. Other districts like Austin ISD are using the day as an education. Now they're actually closing the school, <clears throat> but look at the narrative. They say they're closing the school to use it for educational purposes. But just a couple of minutes earlier, they said they were issuing a disaster declaration. On this channel, I always tell my subscribers, please listen to, listen to the wordage. Event. The county says there are no plans to close roads. Some parks require reservations and many are already filled up. We want to make sure even when we were talking specifically around potential challenge points going into and out of the parks, the goal is going to be to keep the traffic moving uh, as free flow as possible. Hayes County is closing their county offices that day, except for public safety ones. No matter where you are, leaders say avoid non-urgent appointments that day. Stock up on groceries and gas beforehand and download the What Three Words app to make it easier for first responders to find you. We expect to have a nice, perfect day with a nice, perfect crowd. If they plan on having a nice, perfect day, why are they telling you to avoid anything but necessary appointments. See, you know, our government has a history of keeping this people and the populace in the dark as it relates to things, you know? And like I say, over here at this channel, we don't do fear mongering and we don't do conspiracy theories, but we pay attention. Out and, uh, but we're going to be ready if it doesn't turn out that way. If what doesn't turn out what way? I got one more clip for you. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready right now. All right. Key card from the back. Mm -hmm. No, nope, we are good to go. That is not it. You ready? How are we doing up here? So, why is everyone talking about April 8th? Why is everybody worried about it? Well, today we're going to discuss just that, talking about the solar eclipse, but in a little bit different fashion. The thing is, it could be nothing. Absolutely. It could be just a beautiful sight that someone hadn't seen in a while. But some of the preparations and some of the declarations we've heard, it's what's blowing my mind. Let's talk about it today and let's jump into it. And I want to get your perspective on this and I'm going to give you mine and we'll see what we can. much for being here shout out to the max podcast this is what i'm doing a reaction to today if you're new to the channel go down here press subscribe ring the bell give us a thumbs up please it helps us stay on the algorithm and helps tell uh this platform that hey we like this message and it's a good message to spread across youtube so we hope that you will watch comment let us know what you think and if you like it give us a thumbs up it sure does help so today we're going to be talking about april 8th there's a big solar eclipse that's supposed to happen i'm going to show you the pathway right here now i'll be honest with you here in south mississippi we've heard nothing about this uh and you know we've heard their solar eclipse of course but we have not heard you know some of the the things of being overwhelmed and and the mercies declared now there's been several states and several counties declare a state of emergency now the thing is what is being told to us by places in texas places in oklahoma and places in ohio is that well we're doing a state of emergency so it allows us to have more um you know feet on the ground troops on the ground basically in a way that we can help with crowds there's gonna be so many crowds coming to these small towns and that you know we just want to make sure that we can handle the crowd control handle the traffic okay you know you're like okay that that sounds that sounds reasonable you would think that they you know like for instance our county has what we call an emergency management protocol and local people and local volunteer firemen they come together and they help with events like that with tons of tourism coming in for some reason therefore then what happens 
they handle the situation. But why are all these governors and mayors and, and city administrators wanting National Guard there? Now, there's been some speculation to show that there's been specialists called in. I'm going to interject on him one, one time. Now, I just showed you the other clip from that city county meeting, and that was in Ohio, another, you know, another part of the country. They're having this private meeting with state and governmental officials, and like you've seen there, they declared a disaster emergency, a declaration. And doesn't that seem strange? The National Guard, emergency plans, FEMA. Interesting. For, for different um, things that the government does. And they're saying, well, we're going to put them boots on the ground just for safety and protocol. They're also telling their people, these mayors, these states, these governors are telling their people it may be wise to have, you know, maybe two weeks worth of food put up. And, and if you don't have that, maybe go buy it because it's good to prepare because there's going to be so many people there. We may not have enough food. We may not have enough restaurants so we may not have a place, enough beds to stay in uh, for this event. Have you ever. Now, doesn't that seem strange? That they're telling you to have at least two weeks worth of food for a one day event of a solar eclipse. And mainly they're talking to other officials as if they know something that they're not revealing to the general public. I heard that. I mean, we're talking general tourism. A natural phenomenon happening with uh, the solar eclipse. So you're thinking, okay, big group of people coming in to see a beautiful spectacle. But that, that usually brings happiness. That usually brings, uh, well, we want to prepare for the crowds, but ultimately we're going to bring food trucks in. We're going we're gonna to make it big and try to, you know, economic development. And instead, they're almost doing a precarious warning. I mean, there's been declarations where they want National Guard at these locales that could be just traffic i could be putting on just my tinfoil hat but i want to read you some of the comments that that have come out from this from leadership from representation of people in power uh there's one one person that wrote to the columbus dispatch columbus ohio it says we're all going to be overwhelmed by the amount of emergency planning we need to embrace the solar eclipse now listen to that wording that was a direct quote they're worried about the, the overwhelmness that, that we're going to feel and the people are going to feel by being here. Uh, there's another one in uh, Central Texas that says, we're expected to have some of the best views. However, we're worried about the totality of the amount of people traveling in, and we're going to issue a disaster declaration. A disaster declaration, people. Now, they're saying, well, that's just protocol. That's what we have to say to get the people here to help us. Really? Are we that? To a point where we have to declare a disaster to have people come in to help for tourism? That's that's crazy to me. Some estimates show that there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people traveling to, to come to this area. It says that because of that, they're wanting to declare and have National Guards there. This is one quote from Oklahoma National Guard. They're going to be there for April 8th as, a, as, a, as emergency management just needs their assistance. It says the 22-member... Now listen to this now. The 22 members of elite chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear units will be housed in Broken Bow, in addition to 110 to 150 Oklahoma Highway Patrol officers. There will be 150 first responders there and volunteers to help also with the amount of people. Now, I, w I want you to listen. 22 members of the chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear unit will also be housed with these National Guards and Highway Patrolmen. I don't know about you, but if I'm talking tourism, crowd control, I'm not thinking I need a nuclear scientist or a biological scientist there to help with that crowd control. And there's been cases where they talked about, you know, biblical proportions with the Passover, with the, the red heifers, and um, the names of the towns being Nineveh. I mean, there's a lot there. And you can go and dive deep in that. The thing that, that blows my mind, though, is 
here on, on the, the respect of a prepper. If they're telling you to buy one or two, three weeks worth of food just for safety, I think that's a wise thing to do because we've been trying to preach that for years here. But now we're starting to see so many National Guard moves in. What if all of a sudden it's just a traffic situation? What if all of a sudden there is no food in the town because there's a shortage because 100,000 people come to town, which I think is a farce. Could it be a stop? Maybe. Could they use the solar eclipse to all of a sudden bring in a solar flare? Could the solar eclipse truly bring in a solar flare? Who knows? We're to a point where we can't trust any information that we get now. So it comes down to us and our tinfoil hats to wear <laughs> to decide what's best for us and our family. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I really didn't think nothing about it. I really didn't. I've, I've seen some YouTubers do the stories on it. But the more I started reading about the fact of this, the, the nuclear, biological, chemical people for the, the military that's going to be housed there too. Why? And it may be for a justification reason. It may be there may be, um, you know, a situation where they're worried that the solar eclipse may cause power outages, and there may be, you know, a nuclear plant there, a chemical plant there. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about that part of Oklahoma. But why is all of a sudden you're seeing Texas, and Oklahoma, and Ohio, and several of those counties declare emergency before anything happens? Declare a disaster before anything happens in the name of just getting more troops. Wouldn't you think that those governors would just say, look, I, I'm over the, the state guard anyway. I'm just going to send extra people there to make sure that, you know, everybody has a good time. No. Now, we had an eclipse in 2017, a solar eclipse. It was nothing like this. What makes this one so different? And then from the information, they say none of us will be alive by the time they have this same type of eclipse. So it is a galactic event that's only, that only comes once in a lifetime. But this is 2024. And it's a lot going on in this country. You know, with the coming election, with the situation with um, the migrants, that are can't that have flooded the cities. You know, you know, it's worth paying attention to and do your own research, but I have to report on it. We declare it to mercy. And this is my favorite, it's when they try to justify it. And this is what scares me the most is when they say, Oh, I'm just trying to justify it. Well, the declaration of, of a disaster and emergency is just for the anticipation of large crowds, increased traffic, and, st and strain on first responders and hospitals. We want to make sure that our people are taken care of. This is a once-in-a-lifetime situation, and we believe it will be well attended. Okay, I, that sounds great, but do you declare a disaster and emergency? Do they know something we don't know? Is it one of those cases where we're just we're believing into it too much. It's too close to Easter and Passover, and it kind of makes us a little, ah, you know, jittery. I don't know. Here's what I would say to you, no matter what the situation is. Here's the good things about hearing news. First of all, I already have a prepper's plan. If you want to see the solar eclipse, that's awesome. Great. It probably is an awesome spectacle. But make sure you have some extra food and water just in case. I mean, that's what they're saying. Get some extra food and water because there's really so many people there. Make sure you're fully gassed up in your vehicle. Make sure you have some extra gas cans done. Make sure you have some extra propane for your outside cooking if all of a sudden what they're saying is true. I, I just think that there's always reasons to prepare. Now, can you prepare for anything uh, to the extent of, you know, a solar flare and it all of a sudden puts out an EMP blast? Maybe not, but that's what we've been preparing for forever. The whole point of being a prepper and the whole point of living sustainable is to try to build the insurance for safety for our families. Now, does that mean we can prepare for everything? No. But the common sense approach is I'm seeing the news. They're declaring a disaster just to get troops there for a tourism event. I've never heard of any theme park. I've never heard of any parade claiming a disaster just because they have a a crowd situation. I've never heard of a Super Bowl. You know, they win the Super Bowl and they have these big parades. Yes, the governor just brings in extra people. He doesn't declare a disaster. He just makes sure there's people there to help. So I'm a little confused by the wording here. Uh, it may be just a fact that it's trying to deter us from thinking about other news and the bad stuff that's going on in the world and make us focus on something. So it could be just a complete sign for propaganda. But the problem is we don't know that. And so therefore, 
my challenge to you is always prepare food safety for your family, water, and a good tank of gas if you ever had to leave. These are some good things to have. And I would challenge you, do some research. Just find out what your thoughts are on it. Comment below. I mean, is it just a tourism thing? If it is, then awesome. I think it'd be great and great economic development for those areas. But it seems like everybody's not happy about it. It seems like they're almost scared about it. And that's what kind of blows my mind. Do your research. Look at the towns. Is there anything unique about the towns that it's going to be solar flare going across the United States? Is it a big deal? I know in Mississippi, we, we've not heard anything about it. It's just not a big deal. But it could be something to think about. It's always good to do your research and it's always good to prepare and make sure that no matter what, no matter where you're at, anything can be used. Remember, any kind of situation can be used to help promote regulation and control. We've seen that. So be ready. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about April 8th. Is it a big... <clears throat> and that's interesting because it sounds ominous it sounds mm, suspicious because on my first clip i showed you the town hall meeting with the mayor and the police officers and administrators declaring the same thing that texas is claiming a, a, a disaster already now I don't know if you remember the, when the whole East Coast blacked out. The, and the whole East Coast was blocked, uh, blacked out for maybe three days. No power, no lights. Cities in total darkness and, and chaos. You know, this is very strange times that we're living in. And as my subscribers, it would be negligent of me not to report on this story so that you can do your own research come to your own conclusions so that you don't be caught off guard that something is going on because it seems that these officials are already planning have you ever i mean you can have a super bowl or any event have you ever seen them call in the national guard you know this is just something to think about you know Signing to you out of Detroit. Keep your head on the swivel. Salute to all patriots. Keep your eyes open. Peace. Like, share, and subscribe.